Hi everyone! So we now discuss the topic 3 of pharmacology which is nervous system drugs. So when we deal with these drugs, these drugs are those that affect the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord, including peripheral nervous system, the nerves, and also the autonomic nervous system, which we now review first the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. It's an involuntary visceral system which controls and regulates many body functions. All right, when we say sympa, this is our body functioning during times of stress. While para, this is during normal body functioning. That's the first difference. Second difference, norepinephrine is the neurotransmitter innervated with sympathetic, while acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter for parasympathetic. Third are the receptor cells. When we say receptor cells, these are the cells found in the organs. They receive the impulse coming from the nervous system. The receptor cells found in the organs or the target organs of SIMPA are alpha and beta receptor cells, while nicotinic and muscarinic are the receptor cells of the parasympathetic nervous system. Also, sympathetic nervous system is called adrenergic nervous system. Parasympathetic nervous system is also called cholinergic nervous system. So you have to review that. Again, sympa is adrenergic, innervated by norepi neurotransmitter. Norepi transmits the impulses from the nerves to the organ cells during times of stress. And the organ cells, the receptor cells, are alpha and beta. There are two alpha receptor cells, alpha 1 and alpha 2. There are two beta cells, beta 1 and beta 2. On the other hand, parasympathetic is cholinergic. Neurotransmitter is acetylcholine. It innervates uh, the parasympathetic control during normal body function. The receptor cells of the cholinergic nervous system is nicotinic and muscarinic. Okay? Now, let us try to review this uh, figure. The left corner is your parasympathetic or cholinergic, while on the right corner is your sympathetic action or adrenergic action. So para, this is what the nervous system orders our body to function during times of stress or during normal functioning. While the sympathetic orders the body organs to function during times of stress. Let's begin with the eyes. So during parasympathetic function, the eyes constricts. While during sympathetic action, the eyes dilates. That's why when you encounter a cholinergic drug, basically what does it do to the eyes? It constricts the eyes. On the other hand, if you encounter an adrenergic drug, what does it do to the pupils of the eyes? It dilates the eyes. Okay? The second organ is your salivary glands. So parasympathetic, what does it do to our salivary glands? It stimulates the saliva to flow. It's normal functioning. We produce saliva. Kaya nga, di ba, kahit sa gabi, we produce saliva. Pagkagising natin minsan, meron tayong mga laway kasi it's a normal body function. Sympathetic in it inhibits flow of saliva. Next organ that we see there is your heart. The parasympathetic slows the heartbeat. Sympathetic increases heartbeat. Because during times of stress, basically, 
our body needs more oxygen. So, kailangang tumipok ng puso ng mas mabilis to pump more blood needed by our body cells during times of stress. Okay? Next organ that we see there is the lungs. Parasympathetic, it constricts the bronchioles. Sympathetic, it dilates the bronchioles. Next organ is the GI tract. Parasympathetic, it stimulates peristalsis and secretion. That's why we defecate. That is why we digest foods that we eat. It's a normal functioning. Sympathetic, it inhibits peristalsis and secretion. Next organ that you see there is your liver. Normal functioning, our liver produces bile and the other needed enzymes for normal body function. On the other hand, sympathetic converts glycogen to glucose. Our liver stores glycogen and glycogen is a precursor of glucose. During times of stress, our liver converts it so we have enough glucose and we know very well that glucose is our primary source of energy and we need that during times of stress okay next here we see uh, this is your adrenal medulla your adrenal medulla is an endocrine gland which secretes epi and nor epi or adrenaline and nor adrenaline this is needed for sympathetic uh, functioning. Kaya meron tayong mas malakas na energy, strength, pag tayo ay nasa stress. Okay? Para sympathetic, not functional. And then, sa bladder, we urinate. That's a normal functioning. So, the bladder contracts. Sympathetic, it inhibits bladder contraction. So you have to know the difference between the two so that when you encounter different drugs affecting the para and the simpa, ito din yung mga action nila sa katawan. Similar with drugs that antagonize or that block. So opposite naman nun yung function niya. Okay, so going to the drugs, we now have adrenergic agonists and adrenergic blockers. So these drugs are both affecting the sympathetic nervous system. But if they antagonize, they block the action. If they stimulate, they stimulate the action. Kapag naman cholinergic, 3 and 4, ito yung parasympathetic nervous system. If they antagonize, they block the parasympathetic action. If they agonize, they mimic the parasympathetic nervous system. So if you really look at it, adrenergic agonists are similar to cholinergic blockers in action. Okay? Kaya lang ito, ang receptor cells na nasa-stimulate ay ang alpha and beta. Kaya yung functioning niya, sympathetic. Pero ito, kung titignan mo, sympathetic din yung action niya. Pero bakit nagiging sympathetic yung action? Kasi nai-inhibit yung nicotinic or muscarinic receptor cells. Okay? Ito din, cholinergic agonists, and adrenergic blockers. Parang pareho sila ng effect sa body. This one mimics the parasympathetic nervous system kasi nasistimulate yung nicotinic and muscarinic receptors. Ito naman, para din siyang parasympathetic kasi binablock yung adrenergic. Pero, ini-inhibit kasi yung alpha and beta receptors. Alright? Which is also true with the neurotransmitter. So, if the neurotransmitter stimulated is epi, adrenergic agonist. Pero kapag blinak mo yung action ay ninang nor epi, ito siya. Kapag naman the neurotransmitter 
is acetylcholine, cholinergic agonist. Pero when you block it, cholinergic blocker. Alright? So, let's have an example. Let's go to the eyes again. Okay? Anong ginagawa ng sympathetic nervous system sa eyes? So, if you talk about sympathetic drugs, what does it do to the eyes? It dilates the eyes. So, adrenergic agonist drugs dilates the eyes. Which is also the same with the cholinergic blockers. Yung cholinergic agonists naman, what do they do to the pupils of the eyes? They constrict the eyes. So, kapareho ng adrenergic blockers, these drugs also constrict the eyes. Alright? Pero may iba-iba tayong mga gamot. May iba-iba rin um, specific drugs that really affect all of these body organs. Okay? Let's now first with the... Uh, let's now... Uh, start or begin with the adrenergic drug. So, they mimic the sympathetic nervous system, neurotransmitter, nor epi. Adrenergic agonists, sympathomimetics, or adrenomimetics. Okay? There are four receptors. Alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, and beta 2. Okay? Now, let's first deal with alpha-1. Ang alpha-1, it uh, is found in the vascular tissues of muscles which stimulate norepi and causes constriction of arterioles and venules, which means they are basically doing vasoconstriction of the middle-sized arteries and veins. And because they are more of vasoconstriction, ano ang ginagawa ng alpha-1 receptors? They increase blood pressure, they constrict nasal capillaries. So kung titignan mo, yun yung mga indications niya. If they increase blood pressure, no, pwede siya for hypotension, pampataas ng BP. If they constrict nasal capillaries, Pwede siya sa mga baradong ilong for nasal congestion. Okay? So, to be specific, number one, they increase the force of heart contraction. So, it can improve myocardial contractility for those with hypotension. Number two, they increase the blood pressure. That's why it is okay for those with hypotension. Third, it dilates the pupils. It is a potential side effect now. Okay? Uh, it may cause blurred vision. Sa anong mga pagkakataon kailangan tayong magdilate ng pupils kapag tayo ay inooperahan sa mata? Pero hindi ginagamit ang mga alpha-1 adrenergic drugs for surgery to dilate the pupils. Okay, mamaya, i-discuss natin anong mga gamot yung pwede para gamitin to dilate the pupils before an eye surgery. Although, alpha-1 adrenergic drugs do that, hindi ito para dun sa mga gamot na yon. At binanggit ko kanina, anong klaseng gamot yung pwedeng kamukha ng adrenergic agonists? Sila yung mga cholinergic blockers. So, yung cholinergic blockers mamaya, pag nandun na tayo, yun yung mga gamot na pwede for eye surgery to dilate the pupils. Okay? But here, adrenergic agonist drugs dilates pupils, side effect siya. It can cause blurry vision to these patients. Fourth, they decrease salivary gland secretion. So, again, ano ang pwedeng side effect nito? Uh, they cause dry mouth. Parang nanunuyo lagi yung labi. Kapag tinik ang mga alpha-1 adrenergic blockers. Another, may mga pagkakataon ba na gusto nating mabawasan yung salivary gland secretion? Meron ulit. Again, prior to surgery, gusto natin na hindi tayo nagpo-produce ng saliva pag inooperahan tayo, lalo na pag naka-anesthesia. 
Kasi kapag tayo ay under anesthesia, pag nagproduce tayo ng saliva, baka tayo ma-aspirate. Pero, uulitin ko, hindi ginagamit ang alpha-1 adrenergic drugs for that. But the other type of drug na kamukha ng action niya, which are the cholinergic blockers. So, mamaya ulit yon. Dito sa alpha-1 adrenergics, because it does that, yun yung nangyayari. It's a side effect. Fifth is, it increases urinary bladder relaxation and urinary sphincter contraction. It may cause urinary retention because of this. Okay? Kasi hindi ka makaihi. Okay? Again, kamukha nung number 3 and number 4, meron bang pagkakataon na gusto natin mag-relax ang urinary bladder? Yes. These are for people with urinary incontinence. Okay? Um, pero dito, ganun ulit, it's usually a side effect. Alpha 2 functions when there is too much stimulation from vasoconstriction of alpha 1. Blood flow is decreased to the vital organs and alpha 2 receptors can decrease this excessive stimulation. Okay? So, ang ginagawa ng alpha 1, di pa vasoconstriction, kailangan nakokontrol yon At sino nakokontrol nun? Si alpha 2. It's found in the nerve endings It basically inhibits release of norepi, leading to decrease in vasoconstriction. So, kung titignan nyo, yung alpha-2 receptor is not a sympathetic action because it inhibits norepi. Importante yun kasi pag tuloy-tuloy ang functioning ng norepi, delikado siya sa tao because it increases heart rate it increases blood pressure. Alright? That's why alpha-2 produces hypotension. So, kanina siya indicated ang mga gamot na ito for hypertension. And, because it decreases GI motility and tone, kasi nga, di ba, nadidecrease yung peristalsis kasi ini-inhibit yung norepi. So, ang action niya sa GI tract ay para siyang um, binablock yung normal functioning nagkakaroon na possible side effect which is constipation. Alright? Beta 1 is located primarily in the heart and kidneys. First, it increases myocardial contraction and heart rate. And second, it increases renin secretion from the kidneys and this renin secretion increases blood pressure. And because of that, Uh, pwede ang adrenergic beta-1 receptors for heart problems such as cardiogenic shock and dysrhythmia. Okay? Kasi yung mga sakit na ito ay kailangan ng improved myocardial contraction and uh, increasing the heart rate and increasing blood pressure. Which reminds me, as we go through the discussion, meron talaga tayong mapapag-usapan ng mga sakit. Okay? The diseases are medical surgical nursing concepts. But because drugs mainly manage and treat diseases, meron talaga tayong mapapag-usapan ng mga sakit. So first, I have mentioned cardiogenic shock and dysrhythmia. Okay? So... Cardiogenic shock, I will explain a little briefly about these diseases and this rhythmia. Uh, cardiogenic shock is basically a problem of the heart. It is ineffective tissue perfusion. Pag sinabing ineffective tissue perfusion, yung second level of our body system from the cell to the tissue, no? to the organ, to the system, and to the body system, nasa tissue level na yung ineffective blood flow. At syempre, delikado yon. Bakit? Kasi yung heart, hindi na siya nagpa-pump ng blood effectively. Alright? So, dysrhythmia naman, 
dysrhythmia are irregular rhythms of the heart. So, ang dysrhythmia na kikita natin to with uh, laboratory tests such as ECG. So, hindi mo malaman kasi nandudoon yung irregular rhythm or beating of the heart. Okay? You will further discuss this sa uh, med surge nursing. Alright. Let's go back now. So, again, your beta 1 is effective for cardiogenic shock and dysrhythmias of the heart. Kasi ito yung function niya. Beta 2, they are located mostly in the smooth muscles of the lungs, GI tract, uterus, liver, and bones, which relaxes the smooth muscles. Okay? So, uh, first, they dilate the bronchioles. Kaya kanino pwede ang mga gamot na ito? kapag mayroong bronchoconstriction at anong mga sakit yung posibleng may bronchoconstriction asthma right bukod doon COPD so sulat ko ulit natin asthma COPD okay asthma is uh, usually caused by an allergen. No? May allergic reaction. At may nangyayari sa low respiratory tract ng patient na nagkaka-asthma. First, nagkakaroon siya ng inflamed airway. Second, nagkakaroon siya ng increased tenacious secretions. And third, nagkakaroon siya ng constriction of the bronchioles. So, yung pangatlong yun, yung pagsikip ng bronchioles, yun yung pwedeng i-manage ng mga beta-2 receptor cells. Okay? And then, COPD is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So, from the word obstructive, may pagbabara, may pagsisikip din ng airway, like in emphysema. So, pwede din yung mga beta-2 receptor agonist drugs para sa mga sakit na ito. Alright? So, going back, third, o oh, second, I mean, it promotes, promotes GI relaxation. Dahil doon, nagkakos ito posible ng constipation. Alright? Pero pag inisip mo, meron bang sakit na kailangang um, i-relax yung GI tract if you have diarrhea, posible siya, no? Pero iba yung eksaktong mechanism of action ng uh, mga gamot for diarrhea, no? Uh, basically, we will discuss that pag nasa GI drugs na tayo. Third, it relaxes uterine muscles causing decrease in uterine contraction. So, kanino pwedeng gamitin to? sa mga babaeng buntis na nagle-labor na hindi pa naman oras mag-labor. We call that premature labor para hindi magkaroon ng premature birth. So, pwede yun. And, um, which reminds me that whenever you are dealing with drugs, no, you have to know the different pregnancy category of drugs. Okay? Ang mga gamot ay may iba-ibang pregnancy category. Pregnancy category A, B, C, D, and X. So, pag ang gamot ay pregnancy category A, wala siyang risk sa human fetus. Ibig sabihin, Base sa pag-aaral, yung gamot na yun ay safe sa human fetus. Okay? Kapag naman ang gamot ay pregnancy category B, 
sa pag-aaral, yung gamot ay walang risk sa animal fetus. And generally, if it is safe sa animal fetus, safe din siya sa human fetus. Next is pregnancy category C. Basa sa pag-aaral, yung gamot ay may risk sa animal fetus. And generally, if it is risky to animal fetus, risky din siya sa human. Alright? Next is pregnancy category D and X. Basa sa pag-aaral, may risk sa human fetus. Yung D at may risk din sa human fetus, yung X. Pero anong kaibahan ng pregnancy category D and X? No? Ibig sabihin, pag buntis yung patient, pag tinake niya ito, delikado sa human fetus. Pero pag pregnancy category D, yung gamot, kahit papaano, the benefit of the drug outweighs the risk. Okay? Pero kapag pregnancy category X yung gamot, the risk outweighs the benefit. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, you have to consider, no, when giving drugs to pregnant women, kung ano ba yung pregnancy category niya, kung safe ba siya or hindi safe sa babaeng buntis. Alright? These are the different pregnancy categories. So, again, going back, number four, beta-2 adrenergic drugs promote increase in blood sugar through glycogenolysis in the liver. Therefore, it may cause hyperglycemia episodes kasi dumadami ang glucose. Kaya pag ang patient na bibigyan mo ng gamot na ito ay may diabetes, you have to cautiously monitor their blood sugar. Fifth, it increases blood flow in skeletal muscles. These drugs may cause skeletal muscle contractions as a side effect. Okay? Now, I mentioned a while ago that when norepi functions, tuloy-tuloy siya. No? Um, whenever it functions, it increases the heart rate and the blood pressure. Someone must stop it so that napeprevent yung prolonged effect niya of vasoconstriction para hindi siya delikado. At ang mga mau at ang COMT ay nag inactivate normally ng norepi. Napaka-importante ng function niya. MAU is monoamine oxidase. COMT or COMT is catechol o methyltransferase. So this inactivates the action of norepi through reuptake, through enzyme transformation or degradation, or through diffusion away from the neuron. So that the increase in the heart rate and the increase in BP will not be prolonged whenever there is a sympathetic action. Okay. Before we proceed directly with the drugs, no, let us classify them first. Direct, indirect, mixed, selective, and non-selective. So, pag ang gamot ay direct acting adrenergic drug, mismo sinestimulate niya yung receptor, which is alpha-1, beta-1, and beta-2. Remember, alpha-1, beta-1, and beta-2 lang ang sinestimulate niya. Kasi si alpha-2 is already controlling alpha-1. So yung similar sympathetic action ay yung alpha-1, beta-1, and beta-2 lang. Okay? Pag indirect, 
hindi yung receptors ang nasa-stimulate, but the release of norepi. Okay? Next, yung mix, both. So, receptor at yung norepi. Fourth and fifth is selective and non-selective. Pag sinabing selective, pinipili lang ng gamot yung receptor na target niya. Pero pag non-selective, it affects various receptors. Kaya nga pag ang gamot ay selective, maganda yung effect niya kasi yung action niya specific lang sa target organ. Pero pag non-selective, generally mas marami siyang side effects kasi maraming receptor organs yung nasa-stimulate. Alright. These now are the drugs. Alpha drugs, beta drugs, and the alpha and beta adrenergic drugs. So, ito yung mga alpha adrenergic drugs. Alright? Midodrine is alpha 1. So, siya ay very specific lang sa alpha 1. Direct acting siya. Kasi nga, receptor mismo, no? Per orem. Alright. It is for hypotension kasi nga ano yung sabi natin sa alpha 1? Vasoconstrictor siya. If you give uh, drugs per orem sa mga adrenergic na gamot, no? you have to offer it with food to prevent nausea and vomiting. Or, ano yung na-discuss natin before, you give the drugs with uh, meals to lessen the GI upset. Okay? Second is phenylephrine. Alpha 1 din siya. Could be IM, IV, or nasal spray. And it is for nasal congestion. Okay? Um, di pa nga, sabi natin, vasoconstrictor siya. Yung mga alpha 1 uh, receptors. Kaya, very good siya kung pag meron kang maradong ilong. Kasi pag na-constrict yung nasal capillaries, luluwag yung maradong ilong. Now, if you take nasal decongestant, it's important that you only take it until 5 days only. Otherwise, it can cause rebound congestion. Pag sinabing rebound congestion, magkakaroon ka ng constant nasal stuffiness. Even if wala ka namang allergy or wala kang cold-like symptoms. So, limit nasal decongestants until 5 days only. Alright, third is clonidine, alpha 2. No? Um, clonidine, among all the other adrenergics, they can cause dry mouth. Diba nga? Kasi normally, kung siya ay... Um, Alpha, adrenergic, simpa, anong ginagawa niya sa salivary glands? Uh, less production ng saliva. So, clonidine really causes dry mouth as a side effect. It can be given as a dermal patch for hypertension. Kasi, bakit nga hypertension na siya? Kasi alpha-2 receptor. And alpha-2 receptor blocks alpha-1. At ano nga yung ginagawa ng alpha-1? It's a vaso constrictor. So, if it blocks the action of alpha-1, pwede siya for hypertension to decrease blood pressure. Now, it's given as a dermal patch. Remember, pag naglalagay tayo ng mga patches on the skin, no? Kailangan yung balat ay dry and clean. Dapat walang buhok. So, kung ilalagay siya sa dibdib, merong chest hair yung patient, you have to shave. Alright? Pwede pa rin maligo kahit may dermal patch. Iwasan lang na um, masyadong mabasa at malaglag. No? Now, if ever there are dermal patches, when do we replace it normally? Normally, you replace patches if the old one falls off. Alright? Fourth, metal dopa. No? So, per orem and IV, also hypertension kasi alpha 2 siya. Next are the beta adrenergic drugs. So, dobutamine is beta 1. It's an IV drug. Dinidrip 
ang W kahit na IV siya. Hindi siya binibigay as an IV push. So, kung dinidrip siya, ibig sabihin din na dilute yung drugs. Remember, sa pharma natin na medications and calculations, you dilute drugs. Pwede siyang ilagay sa soluset, no? Tapos, dinidrip siya. Kung manual, compute mo siya, ML per hour, times drop factor over 60 minutes. Pero, normally, dapat, no? May um, IV pump. Dapat may infusion pump para ma-regulate yung pag-drip niya. I mentioned kanina, it's for cardiogenic shock because in cardiogenic shock, may problema sa myocardial contraction ng puso. Kaya meron ng ineffective tissue perfusion. And um, these drugs improve myocardial contraction. Okay, albuterol is beta 2. Saan nga makikita primarily ang beta 2? sa lungs. Ko ang beta 1 sa heart, ang beta 2 sa lungs. So, anong ginagawa ng adrenergic nervous system sa lungs? It dilates the bronchioles. Kaya pwede siya for bronchospasm. Okay? Pag sumisikip yung dibdib, nahirapang huminga, masikip ang bronchioles. Alright? Same with third is isoetherine. IPPB is um, intermittent positive pressure ventilation no so it's a bag it's a machine for respiratory distress fourth is terbutalin it's for bronchospasm and premature labor because again a while ago i mentioned that uh, these receptors these drugs no when stimulated they uh, can halt uterine contractions. Same with metaproterenol. It's bronchospasm and acute heart block. So, bakit pwede siya sa lungs at pwede siya sa heart? Kasi beta 1 and beta 2. Beta 1 primarily in the heart. Beta 2 primarily in the lungs. Acute heart block is a form of dysrhythmia. Okay, ritodrine no, is for premature labor. Okay, the mixed, so pag sinabing mixed, may alpha at may beta. Okay, so si epinephrine, uh, sub-Q, IM, IV inhalation. Pwede rin siyang i-drip, pwede siyang i-push. Ang epinephrine pwede rin ilagay directly into the endotracheal tube to reach the lungs. Okay? It's given as a subcutaneous route also. If you give subcutaneous route, you have to inject it and rotate the injection sites. Pag nirotate yung injection sites ng sub-Q, ibig sabihin wag sa iisang route, isang site lang lagi. Because you want to prevent lipodystrophy. Lipodystrophy is a problem wherein there's a uh, loss or accumulation of body fat. No? Kasi nga, lagi kang doon nag inject sa fat na yon ng sub-Q. Alright? It's for an allergic reaction or anaphylaxis. Now, allergies are of two kinds. Lahat naman kayo, alam nyo yung allergy, no? So, may allergen na allergy ka, may mild and severe. Pag mild yung allergy, no, um, meron kang mga rashes, ganyan, usually skin problems. Okay? Pinapantal. Antihistamine pwede, epi pwede rin. Pero pag nag-severe yung allergy at hindi lang mild, yun yung anaphylaxis. Kasi pag severe yung allergy, anaphylaxis siya, it can cause already bronchospasms. Okay, delikado siya. And epinephrine is very good in terms of dilating the bronchioles. Okay? Um, and even with a cardiac arrest. Alright? Epinephrine can stimulate heart rate. Kaya pwede siya sa cardiac arrest. It can uh, initiate heart rate. Okay? Hmm... Ephedrine, no? hypotension, bronchospasm, nasal congestion. 
Sinor Epi, no? is for distributive shock naman. So, kita nyo dyan, nor epi and dopamine is for distributive shock. Kanina, nabanggit ko na yung cardiogenic shock. Ito. Meron ding distributive shock. Okay? Parehong shock yan. At pag Narinig nyo yung salitang shock, ibig sabihin, meron siyang altered tissue perfusion. Nasa tissue level na yung problema sa blood flow. Okay? Pero pag cardiogenic, bakit nagkaroon ng ineffective tissue perfusion? Kasi the heart ineffectively pumps blood. Pag distributive shock, bakit nagkaroon ng ineffective tissue perfusion? Kasi merong severe vasodilation hindi nakaandar ng maayos yung dugo kasi sobrang dilated yung blood vessels. Kaya, nagkaroon ng problem sa tissue perfusion. Okay? So, yun yung distributive shock. And going back, norepi and dopamine can treat that. Because norepi and dopamine can cause vasoconstriction. Severe vasoconstriction. So, pwede siya for distributive shock na may severe vasodilation. Okay? Um, dopamine also, it's given as a drip. So, hindi siya basta-basta pinupush. Alright? Now, if we are talking about all these kinds of drugs, no alpha, beta, and mixed adrenergic drugs, yung common side effect niya pag tinake ng pasyente ay ang mga sympathetic nervous system function. So, tachycardia, palpitations, tremors, dizziness, and increased BP. So, we have to monitor patients when we give these drugs. Also, uh, with high doses or continuous use of adrenergic drugs, urine retention can occur. Baka mamaya hindi na pala umiihi yung patient natin. And we all know that the number one route of elimination of drugs is through the kidney. And also, as nurses, no, we check always the INO. Okay? Um, si norepi tsaka si dopa, nabanggit ko kanina, no, very severe yung vasoconstriction niya. Um, pero dahil dito, no, they can cause really a rapid decrease in the heart rate and blood pressure kapag sumobra naman yung effect niya, may antidote naman. The antidote is fentolamine mesylate, which is a drug that we will discuss further, pero later on. Pero fentolamine mesylate, ang antidote sa norepi and dopa kapag sobra-sobra yung effect ng vasoconstriction. Fentolamine mesylate as an antidote can be given uh, 5 to 10 ml, no? you dilute it, in 10 to 15 ml of saline. Alright? Also, if you give these drugs, ano pa yung nursing considerations? Uh, may DM yung patient. So again, you have to check the blood sugar. Baka mag-increase. Kasi diba, pag sympathetic, may glycogenolysis sa liver. And also, these drugs may pass through the breast milk. So check when the patient is breastfeeding. Okay. Another drugs that may affect the adrenergic nervous system are drugs for Parkinson's disease. So, isa pa ulit siyang sakit. Ang Parkinson's disease, it's a progressive nervous system disorder caused by loss of dopamine in the brain, which mainly affects the movement. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter. At yung neurotransmitter na yan ay responsible sa ating extrapyramidal system. Pag sinabing extrapyramidal system, ito yung ating mga body movements. Okay? We walk, we run, we hop, we sit, we stand, we climb stairs. Okay? Uh, yung extrapyramidal movements na yan ay... Uh, sa tulong ng neurotransmitter na dopamine. E kapag meron kang Parkinson's disease, 
progressive siya. Ibig sabihin, as you grow old, nagde-develop siya, unti-unting nauubos ang dopamine sa iyong brain. At dahil dyan, nagkakaroon ka ng movement problems. So, if you see here the uh, picture of a man with Parkinson's disease, basically, movement problems siya. There's a movie, no, yung Love and Other Drugs by Anne Hathaway and Jake Gyllenhaal. Anne Hathaway um, is developing early symptoms of Parkinson's disease such as tremors as the early symptoms of Parkinson's disease. No? Movement problem siya. Uh, bukod sa tremors, no, yung triad of symptoms, nakitang-kita mo sa patient na may Parkinson's, rigidity and bradykinesia. So, una, tremors, no, nanginginig, rigidity, naninigas, and bradykinesia, mabagal siyang kumilos. Alright? So, yun yung Parkinson's, hindi siya nagagamot. Progressive siya eh. You just manage and control the symptoms. Now, Dopamine is for movement, but dopamine aside from movement is a neurotransmitter that also affects behavior, cognition, and memory. That's why yung late stages ng Parkinson's disease, no, hindi lang movement problem ang makikita natin sa patient. Meron din siyang behavior problems, cognition, memory, hindi na niya kilala kung sino yung family members niya, no? minsan pati sarili niya, hindi na niya kilala, late stage yun ng Parkinson's disease. Alright? Now, meron bang gamot na dopamine? Meron. Pinag-aralan natin kanina, di ba? Dopa, dobu, norepi, okay? Mga adrenergic drugs siya. Alright? Pero bakit kanina yung dopamine, kung babalikan nyo, ang dopamine ay hindi naman daw indicated for Parkinson's disease. Eh ang Parkinson's, nauubusan ka ng dopamine sa brain. Bakit ang dopamine is intended lang for shock? Alright? Um, the reason is because dopamine will not cross the blood-brain barrier going to the brain. Okay? Sa anatomy. No? Yung dopamine na yan, hindi siya makakarating sa brain pag tinake mo siya as a drug. Kasi nafi-filter siya ng blood-brain barriers. That's why ang gamot for Parkinson's disease are just the precursors of dopamine. But not dopamine itself. Okay? Uh, ano yung mga yun? Dopaminergics, carbidopa, levodopa. Alright? Ito yung most common combination of carbidopa and levodopa. They decrease the symptoms. Again, hindi mo nga siya magagamot. Kasi progressive siya. Alright? Nakokontrol mo lang ang symptoms. Dopamine agonists, no? Very effective, lalo na sa early course ng disease para mabagal ang disease progression. Amantadine, bromocryptine. Yung bromocryptine, no, lalo na yan, no, it's commonly given. It can cause peripheral vasospasms. Okay? So, wag mo na siyang, kung babae, no, ang may Parkinson's, no, wag mo pills. Iwasan yung mga panligarilyo lalo. Kasi nga, nagkukos na nga ng vasospasm yung gamot. Alright? Uh, MAU-B inhibitors. Monoamine oxidase type B inhibitors. They inhibit the enzymes which break down dopamine. Kaya, tumatagal yung action ng dopamine. Selegiline and rasagiline. COMPT inhibitors. Catechol o methyl transferase. Alright? Again, they inhibit the enzymes na nagpapa-inactivate sa dopamine. Therefore, nag increase yung concentration ng levodopa when you give it with the drugs. Yun yung entacopone and tolcapone. And the fifth, 
are the anti-cholinergics, anti-Parkinson's. Mamaya, meron tayong mga gamot na cholinergic blockers. Yun yung mga anti-cholinergic drugs. So, basically, these drugs decrease tremors, but contraindicated siya sa myasthenia gravis. So, there's another disease. So, myasthenia gravis. Si MG or myasthenia gravis It's a chronic autoimmune neuromuscular disease. Okay? And ang main characteristic ng MG is extreme muscle weakness. Alright? Sa Parkinson's disease, sabi natin, may muscle rigidity, naninigas siya. So, ang mga anticholinergic drugs, ipaparelax yung skeletal muscle. Na pwedeng-pwede sa mga may rigidity with Parkinson's disease. So, do not give these drugs if the patient has myasthenia gravis. Kasi meron na siyang extreme muscle weakness, tas binigyan mo pa ng muscle relaxant. So, contraindicated siya doon. Okay, carbidopa, levodopa is a common drug given, no? Um, Cinemet, S-I-N-E-M-E-T, is combined carbidopa, levodopa. So, first, it's contraindicated with glaucoma and MG. Nabanggit ko na yung MG kanina kasi nga may muscle weakness sa MG so huwag ibibigay ang Cinemet. What about in glaucoma? Glaucoma is an eye condition with increased intraocular pressure. So mataas yung IOP. And ang mga patient na may glaucoma, kailangang mag-constrict ang pupils. Because when pupils constrict, mababawasan yung intraocular pressure. E ang mga adrenergic drugs, ano ba ang ginagawa sa pupils ng mata? Dinadilate. So, contraindicated din siya with glaucoma. Second, Cinemet should be administered with low-protein foods. Protein can interfere with absorption of the drug. Third, do not stop the drug abruptly. No, kailangan i-taper, meaning bawasan unti-unti ang dosage bago i-discontinue. Fourth, urine perspiration, saliva may turn dark. No? So it could be red, brown, or black color secretions. Fifth, avoid chewing, crushing, or breaking the tablets. Ang carbidopa, tinutulungan niya na ma-prevent ang breakdown ng levodopa before it reaches the brain. So, hindi dapat nasa upper GI tract pa lang eh, ma-dissolve na yung tablet. Alright? Six, take with food to decrease GI upset but better absorption siya kung empty stomach. Okay? Seven, Symptoms will be decreased or absent in 1 to 4 weeks of therapy. So, nandiyan yung kanyang serum therapeutic level. 8. If taken with a MAUI, hypertensive crisis may occur. Mamaya, we will discuss MAUI drugs, monoamine oxidase inhibitors. These drugs are for depression. Example, isocarboxazid. Example yon no? So, it's an antipsychotic drug. So, kapag binigay mo siya with a MAUI, ng Cinemet, hypertensive crisis may occur. Alright? Uh, nine, if taken with anticholinergics, levodopa effects will decrease. So, ang anticholinergics naman, example niyan, atropine. So, hindi rin sila kinocombine usually. And ten, Avoid foods high in vitamin B6, such as fish, liver, peas, beans, and cereals. This is true if the drug is levodopa alone. Because vitamin B6 is pyridoxine, it interferes with absorption. 
But if with Corbidopa, okay naman siya. Okay? Next group of drugs are the adrenergic blockers. These drugs block the action of adrenergics. No? They inhibit norepi. So, total opposite siya ng mga adrenergic agonists. Okay? These are the receptors. So, because they block these receptors, opposite din yung action niya ng sympathetic nervous system. Okay? So, similar effects with para sympathetic or cholinergic drugs. Okay? Alpha-1 no? decreases BP. So, kanina siya pwedeng ibigay for people with hypertension. Second, they cause reflex tachycardia. So, nag improve yung heart rate ng patient. Third, it constricts pupils. So, kanina siya pwedeng ibigay sa mga patient na may glaucoma. Alright, fourth, suppresses ejaculation, so side effect, sexual relations. Fifth, reduces contraction of the bladder neck. Kanino ito pwedeng ibigay dahil dyan sa mga patient or lalo na sa mga lalaki na may BPH. Okay, so going back again. BPH is benign. Prostatic hyperplasia. Okay, BPH. So, benign prostatic hyperplasia. Ang mga patient na may BPH, naka-enlarge o nag-e-enlarge yung kanilang prostate gland. At kapag enlarged ang prostate gland, no, naiipit yung bladder neck. At pag naipit yung bladder neck, no, yung location niya kasi is within the bladder, na inhibit yung full urination. So yung mga lalaki, na pa pero wala nang lumalabas sa ihi nila. Kasi well contracted yung bladder neck because of the enlarged prostate. That's why alpha-1 adrenergic blockers can be given for men with BPH to reduce contraction of bladder neck, therefore, makaihi sila ng maayos. Okay? Beta 1 reduces heart rate. So, pwede siya for those with tachycardia. Beta 1 ulit. Second, they reduce force of myocardial contraction. So, pwede rin siya for those with dysrhythmia, no? Nabanggit ko na kanina yung dysrhythmia. Meron pa ulit, angina pectoris, myocardial infarction, and heart failure. No? These drugs regulate the rhythm of the heart and the force of contraction. So, going back, angina pectoris, Cardiac infarction and heart failure. Si angina pectoris, chest pain. Meaning, kulang na yung oxygen na napupunta sa heart. Yung myocardial infarction naman, pwedeng mag-lead yan from angina pectoris. Kung sa angina pectoris, inadequate pa lang yung oxygen, sa MI, wala ng oxygen na napupunta doon sa heart cells ng patient. Okay? Inatake na siya sa puso. Yung heart failure, no? Usually, these are complications of many heart problem because of uh, ineffective heart contraction, nagkakaroon ng heart congestion sa heart failure. So, angina, MI, and heart failure, um, pwede dyan yung mga beta-1 adrenergic drugs. Beta-2, they constrict the bronchioles, so never give these drugs to people with asthma. 
they contract the uterus, so be cautious if a woman is pregnant. And third, they inhibit glycogenolysis, which lowers blood sugar. So be cautious of hypoglycemia, especially when you give insulin to patients with diabetes. Okay? So let us now discuss these drugs. So alpha, the beta, and the mixed so, nabanggit ko na kanina lahat yung mga indications na sakit, no? Uh, yung mga hypertension, vascular disorders, uh, BPH, nandiyan naman na siya lahat. And remember, kanina I mentioned fentolamine mesylate, antidote siya. Okay? The beta drugs, the beta adrenergic blockers, I mean, are the all lols. So, lahat ng ending niya, all lols. Okay? So, again, nandiyan na yung mga indications niya. All of those I have mentioned already. Yung hypertension, angina pectoris, MI, dysrhythmia, arrhythmia, lahat yon dysrhythmias, no? Yung mga supraventricular tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, lahat yon dysrhythmias. Okay? Ang kakaiba lang dyan yung thyrotoxicosis, no? Thyrotoxicosis is a form of hyperthyroidism. And the uh, propanolol as a beta-adrenergic blocker blocks the conversion of T uh, thyroid hormones, no? Specifically yung T3 and T4. Okay? Kaya siya nape-prevent. Kaya siya for hyperthyroidism. Another is yung migraine. Sa T-molol, no? Yung migraine, it's severe throbbing pain, usually on one side of the head. T-molol, as a beta-adrenergic blocker, can prevent migraine because it decreases release of norepinephrine. And norepi causes migraine, no? Uh, the mixed carvedilol and labetalol. So, common side effects of these drugs are similar to the para or the cholinergic effects, no? Bradycardia, hypotension, headache, dizziness, okay? Ang gamot, if it causes dizziness or drowsiness, you have to teach the patient that kailangan niyang iwasan yung mga activity that require mental alertness such as driving, operating heavy machineries, and the like. Okay? Long-term use, no, it can also cause mood changes, impotence, and decreased libido. Okay, third group of drugs are the cholinergic drugs. These drugs stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system and they activate acetylcholine. So, mga ginagaya ang parasympathetic nervous system. These are the receptor cells, muscarinic and nicotinic. Okay, ngayon, tatlo lang naman yung muscles ng ating katawan. The smooth muscles, the cardiac muscles, and the skeletal muscles. So, si muscarinic, no, smooth and cardiac, nicotinic, skeletal. So, again, ito ay normal body functioning. So, for example, the bladder will contract so that you will urinate. No? Yung skeletal muscles will also contract so that your uh, bones can move. So, yun yung mga functioning ng cholinergic nervous system. Therefore, yun din yung function ng mga gamot na ito. Ngayon, um, there are two classifications of these drugs, direct acting and the indirect acting. Direct acting, they act on a receptor, primarily muscarinic receptors. So, yung smooth muscles and cardiac muscles. Pag indirect naman, they inhibit cholinesterase or acetylcholinesterase. Ano ba yung cholinesterase or acetylcholinesterase? It's an enzyme which destroys acetylcholine. And when they destroy cholinesterase, nai-increase yung acetylcholine, which is neurotransmitter for the parasympathetic nervous system. 
ang mga gamot na ito, ang tawag sa kanila ay anti-cholinesterase drugs. Minsan, tinatawag din silang cholinesterase inhibitors or acetyl cholinesterase inhibitors. Okay? Now, in general, what are the effects of these drugs? Cardiovascular, no? So, they decrease heart rate, they lower the BP, they slow AV node conduction. Similar to adrenergic blockers, but instead of blocking alpha and beta, they stimulate nicotinic and muscarinic. Ngayon, yung number one, it is not as effective as the beta adrenergic blockers for hypertension. Okay, kaya hindi naman halos ginagamit ito for hypertension, but it may cause orthostatic hypotension. Pag ang gamot ay nagkakos ng orthostatic hypotension, teach the patients to move slowly, especially from lying down bago tumayo sa pagkakahiga. Dahan-dahan mo nang maupo sa gilid ng kama, dangle the feet, and then slowly stand up para hindi mahilo. Second, GI increases peristalsis and relaxes the sphincter. This may cause diarrhea. Ang mga gamot na ito ay pwede rin sa GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Yung parang umaangat yung kinain mo, no feelings of nausea and vomiting because this relaxes sphincter. Okay? Lalo na yung uh, upper esophageal sphincter lower esophageal sphincter para hindi ka uh, magsusuka. Third, it stimulates urination. So, pwede ang mga gamot na ito sa mga patient na may urinary retention. Fourth, it increases meiosis. Meiosis is pupil constriction and accommodation. So, kanino pwede ibigay ang mga gamot na ito? for people with glaucoma. Fifth, it increases saliva, perspiration, and tears. So, side effect yan. Six, it constricts the bronchioles, increases secretion. So, again, be cautious if a patient has asthma. And seventh, it increases neuromuscular transmission and maintains muscle strength and tone. Kaya kanina nabanggit ko, ano nga ba yung sakit na nang hihina yung muscles, myasthenia gravis. So, pwede ang cholinergic drugs sa mga patient na may MG to strengthen the weakened uh, muscles. Okay? These are the direct acting cholinergic. So, nabanggit ko na kanina yung mga indications nga, ano, bethanical for urinary retention. If it is given as per ORM, it's best one hour before or two hours after meals, but kung may GI upset, you can give it with food. Metoclopramide for GERD, carbacol, and pilocarpine for glaucoma. No? So, eye drop sa lower conjunctival sac. Now, paano pag may contact lens yung patient? Remove contacts, insert, no, the, I mean, um, put on the drug, as an eye drop, reinsert contact lens after about 15 minutes. Okay? Indirect acting cholinergics, no? For Alzheimer's dementia. So, it's another disease condition. Ano ba yung Alzheimer's dementia? Ang Alzheimer's dementia, it's a form of memory loss, no? Ang cause niya, loss of acetylcholine in the brain. And because cholinergics uh, mainly stimulate acetylcholine, pwede siya for Alzheimer's dementia. Progressive ang sakit na ito, memory loss, hindi siya gumagaling, pero ang mga gamot na ito ay pwedeng magpabagal ng progression ng sakit. Alright? So, maraming pelikula yung may Alzheimer's, yung mga bida, no? Uh, the notebook is one. So, yun yung memory loss. They lose acetylcholine which is uh, functioning in terms of memory, intellect, no? Pwede yun. 
uh, for glaucoma again. So, yun yung mga eye drops and eye ointment. Indirect acting cholinergics, no? For myasthenia gravis. So, nabanggit ko na ulit kanina yung myasthenia gravis. So, chronic autoimmune neuromuscular disorder characterized by severe muscle weakness. So, kung nanghihina yung muscles, no? Bigyan mo siya ng gamot na magpapakontract ng skeletal muscles. At function yon ng cholinergic nervous system. So, kaya yon ng cholinergic drugs. Uh, number one is tensilon or edrophonium. Ang tensilon, it strengthens the muscle. But what we need to remember is, it is only a drug used to diagnose MG. Because you can have muscle weakness, but it doesn't mean you have MG. To determine if the cause of your muscle weakness is MG, you can use Tensilon as a diagnostic test or edrophonium. Alright? Hindi siya pwedeng maging maintenance dose kasi very short ang half-life ng um, Tensilon. Ang peak niya in just several minutes at ang duration niya ay halos 60 minutes lang. So, hindi siya pwedeng maging maintenance dose kasi pag binigay mo yan sa patient, sa patient, in one hour, muscle weakness agad. But, si ambenomium, pyridosmidstigmine, and neostigmine are for long-term maintenance of myasthenia gravis. Alright? Now, um, just remember that in MG, meron tayong iniiwasang dalawang crisis, myasthenic crisis and cholinergic crisis. Yung myasthenic crisis usually cause under medication. Cholinergic crisis usually cause over medication. So sa, mas, sa myasthenic crisis, kung may under medication, nag-worsen ang muscle weakness. It can result in respiratory failure. Give Tensilon immediately. Okay? Sa cholinergic crisis naman, because of over-medication, there is excessive acetylcholine causing low heart rate, low BP, muscle cramps, paralysis. No? Ang gamot naman dyan, anti-cholinergic drug, which is atropine. So, sa MG, no, pwedeng Walang sintomas yung patient at all. If you just religiously take the drug. When you say religiously, tama yung dose, tama yung route, tama yung frequency, huwag magpapabaya sa gamot. So, walang under-medication, walang over-medication. Okay? Um, well, in general, no? Ganun ulit, avoid orthostatic hypotension in these drugs. So, for the eyes, yung mga indirect acting cholinergic, uh, physostigmine, again, for glaucoma, pwede siya. Antidote. Okay. Ang antidote for cholinesterase inhibitors ay ang pralidoxim. Pralidoxim will reactivate cholinesterase. Okay? Kaya, yung kaninang binabanggit ko na cholinergic crisis, no? pwede ding gamit ng pralidoxim as an antidote together with atropine. Okay? Last of the four groups of drugs affecting autonomic nervous system are the cholinergic blockers. So, they inhibit action of acetylcholine. Similar to adrenergic drugs yung effect niya. Okay? So, atropine Pwede siyang pre-op meds to reduce saliva. Nabanggit ko ito earlier kanina. Uh, so, yung mga ooperahan no, for OR, ayaw natin nung nagpaproduce ng saliva habang may anesthesia para hindi magkaroon ng aspiration. Okay? Increase heart rate. No? Um, and it can dilate the pupils. Second, no? Um... Hyosamine, isopropamide, iodide, and propanthaline bromide, no? peptic ulcer, and IBS, or irritable bowel syndrome. So, it decreases 
the peristalsis. Third, scopolamine hydrobromide, no? it's a pre-anesthetic drug, again, to reduce saliva during operation. Pwede rin siya for IBS, no? and yung motion sickness and delirium, nandiyan siya. Uh, scopolamine, or cholinergic blockers in general, they interfere uh, the nerve impulses by acetylcholine that work directly on the vomiting center of the brain. So, pinaprevent niya yung nausea and vomiting. Kaya pwede siya sa motion sickness, delirium, tas magsusuka ka. Okay? Tropicamide midriasis. So, ito ay pwede for eye surgery to dilate the pupils para kitang-kita even the posterior structures of the eye. Fifth is anti-Parkinsonian. So, again, no, they relax the muscles. Kamukha ng adrenergic drugs na cogentin and artane kanina for Parkinson's disease because it's a cholinergic blocker. Nire-relax niya yung skeletal muscles. Eh, di ba, sa Parkinson's, because of loss of dopamine, merong skeletal muscle rigidity. Okay? And last, ipratropium bromide. It's a bronchodilator for COPD. Uh, it is best combined also with adrenergic drugs kanina. Albuterol, isoetherine, terbutaline, lahat sila. They dilate the bronchioles for easier breathing. So, all in all, no, the side effects would include um, drowsiness in chronic use. Again, pag ang gamot nakakaantok, I mentioned you teach patients to avoid activities that require mental alertness. It can cause photophobia kasi nagdadilate ang pupils ng mata. It can cause dry mouth. It can cause decrease in urination. It can cause constipation also. Okay?